This one's for the young viewers especially, those unsure of where they see themselves in 10 or so years. Now, I don't intend for this video to be solely one of encouragement, I'll be very blunt as usual, but I also want, especially those of you in your teen years, to be hopeful for your futures and not be afraid of the daunting classes ahead of you should you choose the engineer's career path. Be quiet, Dark Base 700 brings luxury and silence to the mainstream. Luxury thanks to subtle RGB integration, full case modularity, and even USB Type-C support. And silence thanks to three included Silent Wings 3 fans and sound damping foam all around. Click the link in this video's description for more details. A little disclosure up front, I do have an engineering degree, that's why I feel comfortable enough talking about this subject. I got it from the University of Louisiana here in the United States, and my concentration was petroleum, which overlaps with mechanical and civil engineering to some extent, as well as chemistry in a few places. We all, for instance, had to take thermodynamics, fluid dynamics, statics, and mechanics of materials, and electrical circuits, so in the general core engineering classes. I graduated with a 3.8 GPA and only received one C while in school, we'll talk about that later. But most Mostly A's, a few B's. So the first question people ask me about the engineering program is how difficult the math was, right? This is a valid question for sure. STEM programs often require the highest level of mathematics, and this curriculum was no exception. You'll want to take care of your algebras, geometry, and trigonometry as soon as possible. I recommend in high school if your high school um, offers those courses, just because it tends to hold students up in college and prevent them from advancing in their engineering courses sooner. And as fun as college may be, your goal should be to advance through the curriculum as quickly as possible. The sooner you graduate, the sooner you can start making money. And that's kind of the point after all, right? I took Calculus 1 in high school, and again, my first year in college as a refresher, and I'm glad I did. This covers primarily derivatives and limits. Fairly simple concepts to grasp, but long form problems can be a bit difficult. So if you do your homework and ask relevant questions, you should get through this one without a hitch. My bigger issue was Calculus 2. That was the next required math course in the curriculum. Here, the emphasis is integrals, essentially the opposite of derivatives. The issue isn't so much the concept it was more or less the multi-step process that was required to arrive at the correct answer. So one incorrect step, and depending on the professor or TA, you could end up with no awarded points. I received a B in this course. My first test grade, in fact, was a 51, and I picked it up to a 91 the next test, followed by a 96, and then an 82 on my final, because for some reason they feel like throwing all their finals in on the same day, which is never good for any student trying to cram last minute. They're just kidding, don't do that. The next math class was differential equations. My professor wasn't the greatest, but I had several mathematicians on YouTube to help me along the way. It's one of the reasons why I got into YouTube in the first place. I wanted to teach people what I was learning. I ended up with an A after again bombing my first test. I don't know why that was a recurring theme, but uh, yeah, I adjusted after the first test or so. Something else I had to take quite a bit of in school was statistics for some reason. I had three in total, one with an emphasis in business and the other two in theory and application. Stat is a different kind of math altogether and shouldn't be as daunting in the long run as calculus one, two, and three. I'll say this in closing about math and the engineering curriculum. If I can do it, you can too. And I'm not just saying that because it's the right thing to say. It's just, I was never really great at it. I was pretty average, just determined to pass and keep my grades up. And uh, as long as you have that drive to and study and do your homework, you'll be able to make it through it as well. Uh, my brother is actually the math guy. I don't really have that, uh, I don't know, that gene, I guess. Some people are just wired to understand math and pick it up so quick. And that was not me. It took me, you know, two or three hours to pick up a full concept and then to Again, apply it on paper in homework problems took another two or three hours. So yeah, about a full day's worth of studying would would get me to where I needed to be after that lesson in class. At this point though, the roads diverge. If you are interested in computer science or electrical or software engineering, it becomes a very different ball game than traditional mechanics. So engineering was always about reciprocating forces, right? Energy transfer is basically how we manipulate those transfers with machines. But electrical engineering incorporates topics that are very difficult to conceptualize, at least for me, Transistor theory, for example, uh, DC was easy, but AC analyses were always stumping me. It's vastly different from what a mechanical engineering major would study in his or her fourth year, and that's why I recommend thoroughly reading up on each of these concentrations before declaring a major. These are life and death situations here. I'm gonna go off script for a second and say this about the difference between mechanical engineering and something like electrical. If you're a very hands-on person, you have to see it to understand it, uh, then mechanical engineering is gonna be a bit more tailored to you, I would say. Uh, if you are just a numbers guy and you can pick up languages or patterns very quickly, 
electrical engineering is going to be more your thing. Um, it's I don't know why it plays out like that. It just does. It's how we conceptualize these topics. I can say from the few courses I took that had like an electrical engineering emphasis to an extent um, that it was not the topic for me. Uh, my dad's an electrical engineer, and I always thought it was like yeah, it'd be cool to do what my dad does because if he's good at it, I'll be good at it, right? But no, not at all. I am much more visual and I like having my hands on things that I'm actually learning about. And it's difficult to do that with electrical engineering because everything is like digital or it's, you know, in a circuit. You can't really do anything with that. With that said, though, the one C I ever received in my entire life, I received in thermodynamics. And I think I received that grade because I had a professor who consistently talked about his accomplishments at NASA and who neglected to talk about the relevant topics to uh, pertinent to our tests. So yeah, I would go into the, the test with absolutely no knowledge about a chapter and I would have to use common sense to kind of reason my way through some of the subjects. Um, in other cases, my brother and I both would have no clue how to work out problems. Of course, emailing him is impossible because you know he's got 150 students to worry about at the same time, so our email gets washed through the spam folder. And we're left with nothing but our own devices and Wikipedia, which ended up ultimately saving my grade, preventing me from failing. And it's sad to lean on a, on a website like Wikipedia, but that was really the only way I could conceptualize some of the topics that we were supposed to discuss in class. Now this ties in with something else that you should consider, how much time and effort you're willing to put into your college degree. If you expect to flow by with minimal effort and care into your work, then you shouldn't be an engineer. You shouldn't even be in college if you ask me, but I'd much rather you waste your time in the business field, for example, where it's much easier and where you won't be able to physically harm anyone from neglect or a lack of knowledge. In my field in particular, there are several warning signs when drilling and producing that we learn about in school. Failure to identify any of these could result in something similar to what happened with Piper Alpha. This is something we all had to learn about uh, in my concentration. 167 people died on account of an open condensate injection pump. You don't have to know what that means. Just know that gas leaked throughout the rig, resulting in several explosions. These are a life and death situations, the pursuit of which in any university should not be taken lightly. With that said, several colleagues in my class alone never even bothered showing up to class or studying for tests. Their grades reflected this behavior, though few were still allowed to pass. Look, my point being, a business major who really messes up one day on Wall Street isn't going to kill 167 people, at least I hope not. But in the engineering field, this happens a lot, and it's pretty sad, but it usually happens through neglect or from not knowing what you're doing. So should you consider an engineering degree? Well, if you're watching this video and have high hopes for your future, then yes. Now look, I don't mean to scare you from anything I've talked about in this video, and I'm not saying that everyone should go to college. Of course, there are going to be people who decide that college does not have necessary value that they see in it, the utility that they are desiring. Uh, and they're gonna forego that for some other career path, some other option, and maybe they'll be more successful without the degree than if they had it. But if you're considering college in general, then you probably should go to college just because you already see value in it right enough to consider it. Uh, and I really think that that can be the deciding factor between getting a job and not getting one. Many jobs out there require college degrees, regardless of how stupid they are. You know, they could be as stupid as basket weaving, but if you have a college degree, that's all that matters. So playing the game to an extent, yes, matters. Look, that piece of paper really does matter at the end of the day for a lot of people out there who are looking to hire. Um, so, you know, something to consider. Just because I have a college degree doesn't mean I'm any more intelligent than anyone who doesn't have one. It's just something that I'm proud of because I didn't have to do it, but I did it in order to set myself apart from other people who might want the same job I do. Like anything else, it's an investment worth making in my book, and I don't think you should be afraid of the math in particular if you're dedicated to studying and practicing the material. I'd say the best all-around engineering degrees are mechanical and electrical, just because you can take those really anywhere, uh, but the ones with the most potential and the highest salaries are generally the more specific ones like software, chemical, and petroleum engineering. And despite not using mine at this point in time, I don't regret my pursuit of it. It's a great resume builder. So if I decide to do something else in the long run, I'll have that on my belt. Under my belt? In my belt? How do you how do you say that? So what is next for me? Graduating in December with my master's in business administration. I'm working on that right now online. It's a great program through UL. 
and uh, yeah, I'll be graduating at the end of this year. What I'll do with that degree, who knows? I might never use it in my life, but that's okay with it. It's more or less an insurance policy. That at least is the goal, but I will say for the time being, I'm very happy doing what I'm doing now, creating videos for all of you, uh, for ultimately being my own boss at the end of the day, getting to be in control of my own destiny. How much money I make is ultimately determined by how many views I receive on videos, and being creative is what determines how many views I receive in videos. So it's, it's a drive for me, and it's something that I don't think I'd have in the regular workforce this is a very unique opportunity I'm thankful for all of you for making it happen speaking of which this topic today I just filmed this last minute I brought it up because someone asked this in the live stream we had last night so every Sunday night we have a live streaming uh, session that we call after hours and I usually try to keep it pretty casual we'll do some weird things every now and then where you can call and ask questions but it's ultimately going to be a Q&A every week so you guys have a chance to ask questions uh, get to know me more on a personal level if you want and maybe have your specific questions about your rigs uh, answered in the live stream so thank you for whoever asked this question I forgot who it was um, but this was a really interesting topic and I do receive this question a lot which is why I decided to answer it in a dedicated video like this one speaking of which if you like this video be sure to give this one a thumbs up I appreciate it thumbs down for the opposite click the red subscribe button if you haven't already stay tuned for more content like this this is science studio thanks for learning with us